Hello, this is Tony Dixon for WDEE TV Headline News, coming to you from the WDEE TV studios in Ypsilanti, Michigan. Our top story today comes from the Ypsilanti Courier and writer Ben Baird. Two suspects, one 15 and one 19 years old, have been charged with unarmed robbery and are suspected of tackling a man who was walking home on Halloween and stealing from him. Sheriff's deputies were dispatched at about 7.45 October 31st to the 2700 block of Washtenaw for a report that a robbery had just occurred, according to a case summary from the Washtenaw County Sheriff's Office. The victim, 19, was walking home from work on Washtenaw when he was tackled from behind and he was assaulted by two suspects who then went through his pockets. After his attacker stole his phone and wallet, they left the area on foot. Deputies were able to locate four suspects in a nearby area who matched the description of the suspects provided by the victim. Further investigation in identified two males as the suspects. They were arrested and some of the stolen property was recovered. More on the story can be found on the local news feeds link on our website, WDEETV.com. Coming up next, a Manchester school board member barely escapes a fiery end. At Morgan Taylor, buy two suits, get a third suit free. Morgan Taylor is located at 133 West Michigan Avenue in Ypsilanti. Clothing and accessories for men, women, and children at Morgan Taylor. Open Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Call 734-221-0296. Ask about layaways and in-store financing. At Morgan Taylor, buy two suits, get a third suit free. Welcome back. This is Tony Dixon for WDEE TV Headline News, coming to you from the WDEE TV studios in Ypsilanti, Michigan. Our next headline story today comes from the Manchester Enterprise and writer Austin Smith. Firefighters believe shortened wires may have caused a fire that destroyed a $300,000 farm combine at the home of Lyndon and Ann Ayat Uppis on Monday. Lyndon Uppis, a lifelong self-employed farmer, was operating the combine in a bean field when the fire started. He drove the combine back to a barn, but by that time, the machine was fully engulfed. I was trying to get it back here to get some water on it. But by then, I couldn't do anything with it, said Uppus, who was unhurt. Manchester Fire Chief Mike Reister said they were dispatched to the home on Pleasant Lake Road on a report of a combine fire that was possibly spreading to a barn. Upon arrival, they also found that a small fire had ignited in a cornfield. As Uppus was driving the combine back to the barn, some of the corn stubble caught on fire as he drove over it, said the fire chief. Firefighters drove a Jeep that carried a 60-gallon water tank to extinguish the field fire. Reisterer es estimated they were able to have both fires under control within 15 or 20 minutes. Upper said the fire started near the straw chopper area, which is where the fuel tanks are located. The fire had spread to the fuel line by the time he was able to park the machine in front of his barn. More on the story can be found on the local news feeds link on our website, wdeetv.com. Coming up next, the search for a 22-year-old Monroe County woman who disappeared on Halloween intensifies. This portion of the news is brought to you by the Wolverine Grill, located at 228 West Michigan Avenue, Ypsilanti, Michigan. Check us out on the internet at thewolverinegrill.com. Welcome back. This is Tony Dixon for WDEE TV Headline News, coming to you from the WDEE TV studios in Ypsilanti, Michigan. Our next headline story today comes from the Detroit Free Press and writer Robert Allen. A rural bank building southwest of Detroit is repurposed into a missing person search headquarters lined with boxes of flyers, flashlights, neon vests, and donuts. In this Monroe County community where everyone seems to know everyone, a 22-year-old woman has gone missing. And there's an open invitation for anyone who wants to help look for her. Just come to 8799 Swan Creek Road. 
Chelsea Brooks' friends and family haven't heard from her since a witness last report seeing her about 3 a.m. October 26 outside a Halloween party attended by roughly 800 people on the 3500 block of Post Road. Monday, a week after the search is started, her mother, Leandra Brooks, greeted people at the Newport branch of Monroe Bank and Trust as they arrived at the search headquarters to offer a hand, supplies, or a hug. A sign on the glass door says the branch closed for business in 2012, but 19 other signs say missing and include photos of Chelsea. Leandra Brock has worked for the bank for several years. Because this branch was in use only for ATM purposes, she was given the key to move the search operations indoors. With as many as 100 volunteers appearing every day, the mother says she's keeping a positive attitude despite feelings of helplessness. More on the story can be found on the local news feeds link on our website, WDEETV.com. Coming up next, Alan Trammell is back with the Detroit Tigers organization. At Morgan Taylor, buy two suits, get a third suit free. Morgan Taylor is located at 133 West Michigan Avenue in Ypsilanti. Clothing and accessories for men, women, and children at Morgan Taylor. Open Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Call 734-221-0296. Ask about layaways and in-store financing. At Morgan Taylor, buy two suits, get a third suit free. Welcome back. This is Tony Dixon for WDEE TV Headline News, coming to you from the WDEE TV studios in Ypsilanti, Michigan. Our next headline story today comes from the Detroit Free Press and writer George Seipel. It didn't take long for Alan Trammell to get back to work for the Detroit Tigers. A couple of hours after Monday morning's announcement that Trammell had been hired as a special assistant to general manager Dave Dombrowski, he said he had just gotten off a plane in Phoenix and was going to watch some of the organization's prospects in the Arizona Fall League. Trammell, who has been with the Tigers as a player, coach, and manager for 24 seasons, said current Tigers manager Brad Osmus recently reached out to him to see whether he would be open to returning to the organization. Trammell spent the past four seasons as the bench coach for the former Tiger Kirk Gibson with the Arizona Diamondbacks. The staff was fired before the end of the regular season. Quote, couldn't be happier. Brad Osmus, who I've been friends with and played with him, we were neighbors for a few years. We'd go to lunch a couple of times in the offseason, and I thought it was just a call to check up on me and see how I was doing, which it was. But at the end, he mentioned, hey, I talked with Dave recently, and he just wanted to see if you'd be interested in possibly coming back in some capacity. Caught me off guard. I started to think, you know what? Sure, I'd be interested, unquote, said Trammell. More on the story can be found on the local news feeds link on our website, WDEETV.com. Coming up next, congratulations for some and a go team for others as the first round of the state high school football playoffs ends. This portion of the news is brought to you by Hikes Decorated Apparel, located at 133 West Michigan Avenue, Ypsilanti, Michigan. Check us out on the internet at hike.com. Welcome back. This is Tony Dixon for WDEE TV Headline News, coming to you once more from the WDEE TV studios in Ypsilanti, Michigan. Finally, we here at WDEE TV Headline News want to salute the fine season that some of our local high school football teams had. Five area teams made it to the first round of the playoffs Manchester, Chelsea, Ypsilanti Community, Ypsilanti Lincoln Consolidated, and Celine. With Chelsea crafting a 21-7 victory over Gross Hill and Celine dominating Westland John Glenn to advance to the second round. We also like to highlight the effort the Ypsilanti community showed with unbeaten Brownstown Woodhaven before falling by a mere three points. Congratulations to all these fine squads and good luck to the survivors this Friday. Now for WDEE TV headline news, this has been Tony Dixon saying don't forget to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe to our headline news on our YouTube channel. All social media links are WDEE TV. Thanks for watching and have a pleasant evening.